In this lecture, we're going to continue talking about the cross product, and in particular, we're going to use a cross product to compute areas and volumes. So to talk about how we can do that, we need to remember this formula here, which says that if you take two vectors, a and b and r3, and cross them, you get another vector whose length is equal to the length of a times the length of b times sine of the angle between them. Okay, so we're gonna use this formula to compute first the area of a parallelogram in R3, where the cross product makes sense, whose sides are A and B. Okay, so imagine here that A and B are two vectors in R3, and together they form the sides of a parallelogram. So I've got A, B, drawn so that their tails are at the same point, and then this vector over here is another copy of A, and this vector on the right is another copy of B. Well, what is the area of this parallelogram? To see this, what I would do is, is drop down this altitude right here, and then notice if I cut off this triangle and I glued it to the other side, we would be looking at a rectangle whose base is the length of the vector a and whose height is the height of this altitude. So let me just call that h. So the area of this parallelogram would be h, here I'm just treating that like a length, so I'm not denoting that with a vector or anything like that, h is literally the length of that altitude I just drew, times the length of the base of that rectangle, which is a, the length of a. If we look at this triangle here, we have an angle, an opposite side, and the hypotenuse, so it makes sense to use Sokotoa here with sine. We can say that sine of theta is the length of the opposite side, which is just h, that's just that scalar value, divided by the length of the hypotenuse, which is the length of the vector b. So this tells us that h is the length of b times the sine of the angle between a and b. Okay, so now that we have a better expression for h, let's plug that back into our formula for area at the top. So we can say that the area of this parallelogram, we originally wrote that as h times the length of a, but we can now replace h with the length of b times sine theta, and then times the length of a, and then let me just write that in a better order. So how about the length of a times the length of b times sine of the angle between them? But that is exactly the length of the cross product of a and b. So the area of a parallelogram in R3 whose sides are a and b is equal to the length of the cross product of a and b. Here I'm emphasizing that a and b live in three-dimensional space because that's where the cross product makes sense. However, you can also use this formula to calculate the area of a parallelogram in R2. In our next example, we're going to do something similar. In this example, let's find the area of a triangle whose vertices are P at the point 1, 1, Q at the point 4, 2, and R at the point 3, 7. All of these points are drawn here in the XY plane. So first we have to figure out how we can use parallelograms to try to find this area so that we can use cross products, but then we have also have to make sense of the fact that we're working in R2, not R3. Okay, so let me go ahead and fill in the sides of this triangle. So this is the area that we want. We can view the area of this triangle as half of the area of the following parallelogram. First, let me copy the line segment from P to Q and extend that to the top right away from R. And then I can copy the line segment from P to R to connect Q to this new point. And now we formed a parallelogram whose sides are given by the line segments P to Q and p to r. Let's turn those line segments into vectors. So this is the vector p to q, and this is the vector p to r. So now our triangle is half of the parallelogram whose sides are defined by the vectors p, q, and p, r. Let's actually find those vectors in coordinate form. So p, q is going to be the coordinates of q minus the coordinates of p, so that's 4 minus 1 comma 2 minus 1, which is 3, 1. 
to the right three up one unit. You can check that on the graph. And similarly, PR is going to be the coordinates of R minus the coordinates of P, so 3 minus 1, 7 minus 1, which is 2, 6. A minute ago I said that the area of a parallelogram in R3, if you have the vectors that form the sides of that parallelogram, can be computed with a cross product. I've also emphasized that the cross product only makes sense in three-dimensional space. Here we're working in two-dimensional space, the xy plane, but we could think of this as being embedded in larger space if I give each of these vectors a third coordinate of, say, zero. So imagine now that I could actually sketch this triangle in the xy plane as a subset of the larger xyz space. So in R3, we could say that PQ could be treated like the vector 3, 1, 0, and PR could be treated like the vector 2, 6, 0. Now it makes sense to compute their cross product. So to do that, I'm going to have I, J, K on the first row, and then PQ first, so that's 3, 1, 0, PR second, so that's 2, 6, 0. Now when I cross them, what I typically do is I know my first calculation is returning me the part that goes with I, so that's the first coordinate. So then I come down here and take the determinant of this 2 by 2 submatrix in the lower right corner, and that's going to be 1 times 0 minus 6 times 0, which is 0. Then for my second coordinate, going with the J component here, it's going to be 3 times 0 minus 2 times 0, which is 0, and we would also pick up a negative sign. So let me do just 3 times 0 minus 2 times 0. And then the third component, going with a K component, is the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix in the lower left corner, and that's going to be 3 times 6 minus 2 times 1. So overall, this cross product is 0, 0, 18 minus 2 is 16. We could have anticipated that the result of the cross product would have this form, 0, 0, something, if we tried to take the cross product using the right-hand rule visually. So if you put your fingers parallel to PQ and sweep them towards PR, your thumb should be pointing straight out at you, and that's the direction of the positive z-axis. The only question is, how long is the resulting vector, and in this case it's 16 units long. So we note that the length of PQ cross PR is the length of the vector 0, 0, 16, which is 16 units long. That tells us that this parallelogram, which we originally sketched as just living in the xy plane, is 16 square units of area, so our triangle has 8 square units of area. That's how you can use a cross product to compute the area of a triangle or a parallelogram in R2. Think of it as embedded in R3 and use the cross product appropriately. Let's finish this lecture by using a cross product to compute the volume of what we call a parallel piped. So a parallel piped is an object whose sides are all formed by parallelograms. So we have three vectors here, A, B, and C. A and B are two vectors forming a parallelogram, which is the base and the top of this parallel piped. C and B form the left and right sides. So we have a parallelogram on the left and a parallelogram on the right. And then A and C form a parallelogram, which is the side closest to you and the farthest side back here. So it's a six-sided object, and each side is one of three types of parallelograms. Okay, so what is the volume of this parallel piped? Well, similar to our discussion a moment ago with the parallelogram, you could imagine taking kind of like a wedge here. So if I could cut off this wedge on the right-hand side and glue it over on the left-hand side, then we would be looking at a prism whose base is a parallelogram, but then which gets lifted straight up. The volume of a prism is always base times height. So we need the area of the base times the height right here, so the height of this vertical line that I dropped down. Okay, let me erase this. So the height we need is this height right here. 
we'll multiply that height times the area of the base. So the volume is h times the area of the base. But the base is a parallelogram whose sides are given by the vectors a and b. So the area of the base is the length of the cross product a cross b. So we can say the volume is the height times the length of a cross b. Okay, so now I need this height. The way I've sketched this parallelogram, a cross b is pointing more or less in the same direction as c. That doesn't have to be the case, but we'll work with this diagram the way that I've drawn it. Notice that the height here is like the shadow that c would cast on a cross b. In other words, it's the length of the vector projection of c onto a cross b. And that would actually be true even if a cross b was pointing in the opposite direction. So we can say that h is the length of the projection onto a cross b of the vector c. So that's going to be the length of c dot a cross b divided by, for the denominator I'll write, the length of a cross b squared times a cross b. The denominator is a positive scalar, so let me pull that out front, and we have 1 over the length of a cross b, that length squared, times the length of c dot a cross b, that's a scalar quantity, times the vector a cross b. This coefficient here is a scalar, and this term is a vector. So if we want to take the length of that scaled vector, it's the absolute value of the scalar times the length of the vector. So that gives us the absolute value of c dot a cross b times the length of a cross b all over the length of a cross b squared. So let's see if we can do a little simplification here, take away that square. And that's a new expression for h. Let's go back and plug that into our volume formula. So we get, so the volume of our parallel piped is h times the length of a cross b. h we can now write as the absolute value of c dot a cross b all over the length of a cross b. That's h, and then we're going to multiply that by the length of a cross b. That was the area of the base. Once again, we get some cancellation. And we're left with our final formula, which is the absolute value of c dot a cross b. So a cross b is a vector, c dot that vector is a scalar, and then we take the absolute value of that scalar because our volume should be positive. You might recognize that this is a scalar triple product. So that's how we use the cross product to compute the areas of parallelograms, both in R2 and R3, triangles in R2 and R3, and also this new object, a parallel piped. Thank you for your attention.